Hello everybody and welcome to another CB Showtunes tutorial. Now in the previous tutorial we learned how to make this scrolling script on our um, I guess on your textures and of course as you can see it looks like we are actually moving inside the scene but we are actually standing still. Now during this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to cause these objects to come at you at random and of course how to make them appear at certain points and all this sort of stuff, how to speed things up, how to slow it down, stuff like that. Now during this tutorial as you can see we have this little mark right here. Um, the game works just fine with this uh, error. Um, if it doesn't go away then just leave it inside the comment section below and of course I'll figure out how to uh, get it rid of it. So anyway, let's go and get into this. So the first thing that you're going to need is uh, three individual prefabs. Now these of course are all the same prefab that I actually just copied. Um, they're all just cubes with the texture added on top of them. And each one of course was uh, put at a certain position which of course was uh, as you can see when we press play, um, one is going to be on the right, one is going to be in the middle, and then one is going to be on the left. So I just simply placed the objects where I wanted them to spawn, and then I simply made them into prefab, and then destroyed them. Okay, so now since we've got our objects, we are going to discuss um, pretty much how we spawn these objects. So as you can see, I have this... Uh, what I call spawner, but this is simply a empty game object and I added a script to it. So we're going to go over to our script um, and I call it spawning random, uh, just a simple name of course, but you can call it whatever you want to. So here is the gist of it all. The first thing, first thing that we need to do is create a public game object and then we're going to, I guess this is an enum or what is it called? It's uh, pretty much uh, the brackets and what they do is allows you to put in multiple objects inside this one game object. So this specific variable now is equal to multiple objects inside your game. Then of course we created an int random object and then we made these three different ints uh, for our ticks or for every time that we wanted to spawn. So I called the first int random pause. I called the second int pause time. I called the third int max pause time. Now under pause time, I set it at 100 and max pause time is at 100 as well. Um, you could make these public variables, but I'm just leaving them as solid ints so I don't have to worry about it. Next, um, under void start, we're going to need to select random object and is equal to random dot range. Now what random dot range does is it allows us to pretty much select one of these individual objects. So these individual objects are numbered from zero to whatever number that you have it set at. So zero, one, two, three, four, as many game objects as you have inside this individual object. Um, so I had six inside my um, game objects, so I simply put random.range 0 to 7. Now underneath the um, void update, you have the pause time, which as you can see right here, is going to be minus equal to 1. So 100 is going to be decreased by 1 every single frame. Then we're going to say if pause time is less than or equal to 1, then pause time is equal to pause max pause time. So it's going to re-equal 100 and it's continue going back down. Uh, pretty much it's just going to reset these, um, I guess, shots. Alright, so now we're going to come over here with another if statement and we're going to call it if random pause, which is of course our um, random pause right here, is equal equal to 1, then and and pause time is less than or equal to 10, then we're going to say random object is equal to random dot range 0 to 4. or So pretty much speaking, this is going to be our first object through our third object. And then we're going to instantiate the blocking object, and then we're going to choose a random object. So what we're doing is we're selecting this blocking object, and then we're going to simply select between the range of 0 and 7, or now 0 to 4. So 
we're going to grab whatever objects inside here between one and three that's the object that it's going to select from then we're going to have a random pause is equal to zero then we're going to say else if random pause is equal equal to zero and then pause time is less than equal to 10. so basically we're just going to be switching this random pause from it equal to one to zero so now since it's equal to zero it's going to run this statement and this is pretty much just going to be the same thing as this except all we're going to do is just change the random dot range to um, choose the number three to six instead so then it's going to instantiate the objects and of course go through all that so that's all that you're going to need to do for your uh, script there and on your objects um, so if I go over here as you can see we have this little um, movement script now the reason why we have this movement script is so our objects will actually move inside the scene so if we didn't have this movement script our objects would not move so what I did was I simply created these public float variables called x speed y speed and z speed so whichever axis we have for any object that we're sending into the scene all we need to do is add the script to it and then adjust whichever axes we want to adjust it on underneath the void update we're going to call this dot game object dot transform dot translate then we're just going to add the x the y and the z so on each one of these objects i simply added a negative 0.25 on the speed and that's about it all right i hope this helped you guys um if you have any questions on any of this stuff uh, please leave it inside the comment section below i will get back to you on that and uh if you really like this video please leave a like on it subscribe and i'll check you out later